Yep. Hi everyone, I am Gallus Rini and I'm going to be showing off the Ninja Gaiden Black speedrun today for everyone to see. Hopefully you will enjoy this run and I hope you've been enjoying the marathon so far. Okay, so timer will start when I press proceed on this screen, which will be in 3, 2, 1, go. So yeah, this is Ninja Gaiden Black. Ninja Gun Black is an action game by Team Ninja that was released on the Xbox, the original Xbox. Today I'm going to be playing it on the Xbox One because that's what I have, but you can also play it on Xbox 360 and the other Xbox consoles, even the more modern Xbox consoles. So the main character that you play as for the duration of the whole game is Ryu Hayabusa. He is a ninja of the Hayabusa clan and this game, he has an array of many different types of combat and weapons that he's going to acquire throughout the run, which I'll get to show off when we get them. So the first chapter, we're in the Ninja Fortress, and the first thing that I'm going to do is hit this lamp, and out of that lamp, there is a small yellow orb that comes out. That is called Yellow Essence, and Yellow Essence is really important for combat in this game. Because one thing you can do with Yellow Essence is when Ryu charges up his blade and absorbs the essence, he can perform this slash attack, which typically will one-shot enemies. So throughout the run, we're going to be making really good use of that. Essence is also the main form of currency in the game, the Yellow Essence. So it's pretty cool that you can use the currency as a way to also perform attacks. So we're going to be seeing that a lot. I come down here because there is a key item that I need to get, the fangs of the samurai. We need to put these fangs into a samurai statue in the area so that we can progress forward in the mission. This chest we get a talisman of rebirth and from this chest we collect lives of the thousand gods. The talisman of rebirth, as the name suggests, it allows Ryu to resurrect if his health hits zero. So that's going to be pretty useful in the run because one thing that this game has is a reputation for being very punishing and pretty brutal. So if we get into a pickle, that will help us out to get, yeah, get through it. <laughs> now we go up here. We had versed some ninjas in brown clothes, but now we're going to be versing some ninjas in white. Their behavior is a little bit different. I feel like they're a bit more a bit more annoying to deal with because they're very agile, but hopefully we can hit them with ease. There we go. That was really good actually. Very very good. <laughs> now we have the boss of this mission. His name is Mirai. And for Mirai's fight. We're going to try and make distance with him so that we can get him to do that roll that he does, like that. And then we take advantage of that when he comes out of it to go through him like this. We can perform quite a bit of damage with the sword. We hit him once, go up, and then we can go through him. And that's the end of his fight. We don't actually defeat him completely. It cuts off to a cutscene. Yeah, that we don't watch, but... After each chapter, because this game is mission-based, you get your in-game time, karma score, yeah, some information about how you went. So you're going to see that after each chapter. One thing you didn't see from the cutscene was that now Ryu's village is in danger, the Hayabusa village is in danger, so we have to travel back and try and see what's going on in the village. So if you have a donation or two, you can read some here while I'm just traveling through the area. Sure thing. Uh, Whisper Walrus sends in $10 saying, Gala is the best. It's amazing to sit, have seen her from the beginning of their speedrunning journey. And now seeing her on GDQ. You're all incredible. Much love. Thank you. <laughs> That's really sweet. <laughs> oh, we go down here. Valley of Shadows. If you've got and now we're going to be. Oh, go oh, ahead. <laughs> I'm just going to be collecting 
uh, what is called Ninpo, the art of the fire wheels, which is like a, a scroll. Ninpo is like sorcery in the game, and now that we have collected that, underneath Ryu's health bar to the top left, there is this flaming orb. And fire wheels allows Ryu to cast an array of fireballs around his body, so I'll get to show that off. Also from that chest I collected smoke bombs, which we're not going to be using for this chapter, but for the next chapter is going to help a lot for the boss of that mission. Because a property that smoke bombs have is to distract an enemy. So, yeah, that will be coming in useful for the next chapter. We're now at the, the Hayabusa village. From this pot, we collect the Lunar. The Lunar is like a staff weapon. And from Mayane here, who got defeated, unfortunately, we collect the bow. She's another character in the game, but we're not going to see her that much. We purchase Inferno from the statue, the Muramasa shop statue, and we collect two potions from the side there. Which I'll get to explain. We collect arrows from the dead body. And now this fight, we have a very specific way that we perform it. The Inferno Scroll that I had bought is another form of Nimpo Sorcery. We're going to be equipping that and using it for this fight. With the aura that the Inferno has... Well, he did not do. That sometimes happens. You can knock down one of the horsemen. Okay, that's not the direction that I wanted to shoot, that's okay. You can knock down other horsemen and then with the Inferno Blast, you can hit the second horseman, which helps a lot to take down that fight. Gonna see Inferno use quite a bit on the run. Nimpo is very powerful and strong, so it's gonna help us out a lot. This is Masakata. For Masakata's fight, we're going to try and only use arrows on him. However, something that quite a few enemies in the Ninja Gaiden Black game can do is that they can just block or decide not to take damage, which is happening right now, which is very unfortunate. <laughs> so we got to look out for that. We're hoping he will take, yeah, enough arrows so that we can progress on because those arrows do quite a bit of damage to him. There are also mages on that bridge that throw yeah, magic at you, so you got to look out for them too while doing that fight. After defeating him, you pick up a scroll, which is the counter-attack scroll, which so now Ryu will be able to do counter-attacks. The way that you perform counter-attacks in this game is whenever Ryu blocks and an enemy hits him while his sword or his weapon while he blocks and you press the attack button, he will do a counter-attack. So that's going to be helpful for this mission and yeah, over the course of the run that is a good mechanic to make use of. So I pick up an elixir of the devil way. There are two types of elixirs in this game that are red and blue. The blue ones are for healing or for life, and the red ones, the Devil Way ones, are for Ninpo to replenish the Ninpo slot so that we can perform more, more Ninpo sorceries. So we kill him, and then we take use of the essence that we get from the enemies so that we can slice through them using an essence technique. You might have noticed that I left an essence behind because one thing they can do with the essence is you can pull it through the area, which is what we're going to try and do for this fight. We do two jumps and then we can pull the essence from the previous fight into this fight so that we can perform that slash. I'm going to collect one. Yeah. And then we continue forward. So yeah, knowing about essence techniques makes the the fights really first. <laughs> Very good technique for chopping their heads off. 
We're going to be doing that again. We're leaving an essence behind in that room because we want to travel as fast as possible to the next area with enemies, and then we're going to pull it to this fight. Because, yeah, whenever Ryu does a charge attack, the essence in the area will want to come towards his body to do an essence technique. So that's what we're going to try and do. And we slice through both of them. Now there's going to be enemies coming from the windows. Have to look out where the next one will come. Very good. Now we're going to do a counter attack. So there is an enemy coming out of here that will always do an attack as soon as he comes out. It's going to look out for that. Counter attack. Absorb the essence and slice through him. The darker soldiers. The soldiers in the black armor have more health than the ones that don't. Yeah. We just have to travel through here. I'm gonna make a save here because there is a possibility of dying in this next segment. And one thing about this game is that this game does not have checkpoints. So if I were to die, I would have to start the run all over again. And we wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> make sure to make saves, it's important. From a box that I opened, there was essence that came out of it. And we just chain the essence for each of the enemies. There we go, put that down. Now I can't grab that wire just yet because there are enemies that shoot you off. We don't want them shooting me off. Let me get on the wire. Takes a little while to get across, but he eventually gets there. <laughs> Let me go down. There's going to be an enemy around the corner, but I'm going to be doing another counter attack to him. So this one will counter attack is a little bit different in that I can kick him off. And we have to go in here. We have to break this system here so that we can go through a door that we currently don't have access to. We have to do that. Now we're just going to travel back. If you have a donation, you're most welcome to read some. Sure thing. Uh, Serenity611 donates $500. Uh, thank you so much for that generosity. Saying best of luck to Emre on her upcoming Hollow Knight run. And a huge thank you to all runners and organizers of this amazing event. Um, and again, I just would like to point out that we do have that incentive for Path of Pain open. Uh, we're sitting at $1,119 uh, out of $6,000 on that right now. But if you can get that through, folks, uh, it, it doesn't close until like about three quarters of the way into the run. But if you can get that in, it is a much more difficult version of White Palace. Um, and it's a, got a mix of platforming and combat, cha combat challenge. So, you know, if you're loving what Gala is doing right now on your screens, you're going to want to see this. Awesome. So I did a menu there. I equipped the Firewheels Ninpo which we're going to be using for the boss at the end of this chapter, which is coming out really soon. I also equipped the Luna, so we're going to be seeing the Luna weapon in action. I also equipped smoke bombs as well, which we're hopefully going to use to distract the boss a little bit. Oh. Okay, cool. I don't like it when they shoot. <laughs> we go up here. Around the corner, we pull this lever, and this will let us go to the rooftop. So we're going to do that. This boss coming up, his name is Dynamo. He can be a little bit annoying. He has a few moves that are not very nice for the speed run. First thing that I'm going to do is put down a smoke bomb because that distracts him to shoot his. Laser once. His grab is really not nice. I'm gonna take this moment to actually heal. Gonna use fire wheels. Fire wheels has good tick damage.
And we use this poking move with the Luna. Just without it doing damage to him. And we do that. There is a move he can do where he summons like a dome around himself and that's really not nice. Thankfully he didn't do that, but he did do shooting, which is not good. A lot of the moves, ragdoll Ryu really, really hard. <laughs> he gets a lot of knockback from enemies. So you gotta watch out for that, with the enemies in this game. Now we're on chapter four. We'll just make them there just to distract, distract them a little bit. We have quite a bit of movement. This gives me a good opportunity to explain a bit about the movement in this game. So the main way that we transverse around the world is through rolls and jumps like this. There is also on landing jumps. And yeah, this movement is the main movement that we use throughout the whole game. Another thing to take note of is that enemies will take extra damage if they collide with a wall. So for a few fights, we're going to be taking use of that by hitting enemies into the walls with the Luno. So that they die in, yeah, die first. We hit a little cutscene here of looking at Muramasa's shop merchant but we don't go in there just yet we're going to equip inferno and when we come back here there's a fight that emerges i'll be using the luna to poke these guys into the wall then we use inferno and we can blast the two soldiers that come down up here there is an item that is going to be really useful to use for the run it's going to allow us to have another Nympho slot. So we can have two little fiery orbs underneath Ryu's health bow. We have to go this way. Pull down this lever and now the door is unlocked. Those shurikens that <laughs> sometimes come down, they're from Ayane giving you tutorial tips. But we don't need to read them. I always like sometimes thinking of it like she's trying to kill Ryu. <laughs> but she has such bad aim <laughs> with the shurikens. Anyway, it's just a funny little thing. From this chest, we get a Great Devil Elixir. The Great Devil Elixir allows you to get more Nympho replenished. Oh, that's going to be useful for the, for the run, to have that item. We arrive at Han's bar, but there is a bouncer in front of the bar who doesn't let you in. We need to get a ticket to the bar, which we're going to acquire by going to the merchant. We're going to go to Muramasa because the way that you get the ticket is to purchase from him. Now these guys need to leave me alone. Sometimes they can harass you trying to go through the door. He's Muramasa, legendary Muramasa. We're going to talk to him, and we're going to upgrade our dragon sword. And then he gives us the free gift of the ticket for the bird. We're going to be using that. And when we get to the end of the bar, that will be the end of this chapter. So there was no boss in this chapter, but there will be a boss in the next chapter. There's a cutscene here, all the people in the bar are afraid. There's a fiend in the bar. So there are two types of enemies in this game. I guess they could be categorized. Fiends and humans, or humanoid kind of enemies. So far we've only been seeing humans and soldiers, but now we're gonna be seeing some fiends in the next chapter, and especially the next chapter after that. I'll get to show them to you. We also meet a character whose name is Rachel. We're not going to see her throughout the game, but we see her sometimes in the cutscenes. There is another version of this game, Ninja Gaiden Sigma, which got released on the PlayStation 3, and also got a Master Collection, which is now on Steam and other platforms such as the Nintendo Switch. And on that version, you can actually play as Rachel. She's a playable character. So that's just a little bit of something. <laughs> 
you can play as her. She plays very differently from Ryu. Let's go over here. Distract them, we go up the wall. Also with Ryu's movement, yeah, because he's a ninja, he can make use of the surrounding area. He can run on walls and do a lot of acrobatic movements. And that can also be really helpful for going first in this game. I have to go around here because we have to get a key. Which is in this chest up here. A Pegasus key. Key of Pegasus. I'm gonna try and put a smoke bomb there to distract them. Because if I distract them, I can interact with this door before they come to me. However, they did come, fortunately. If I could just cut it, in here, I keep looking at yeah. the number, folks. Uh, it's, we're at $69,858 today. That's amazing. It's a really nice number. But you know what would also be pretty awesome? If Do you think we could hit 70000 I mean, we're, we're so close. It's under $200 away. So if you could get your donations in, I'd love to see that number soar. I'd love to be hyped with Gala during this run for that number, actually. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, on upward surfaces, it's better to do on landing jumps. On landing jumps, which I'll show a lot in the next chapter in particular, is this movement, which I'll just show you here, where Ryu will jump one after the other as soon as he touches the land. Yeah, that's another form of movement that we use on the run. Some enemies are going to spawn in. We use the Luna to poke them into the wall. I'm actually going to keep my Luna equipped. Another form of essence technique, which isn't called an essence technique, but there is other forms of essence in this game besides yellow essence, such as blue essence. So blue essence, when absorbed, Ryu will gain health because it's yeah, blue. But if he uses it in his weapon, he will do an ultimate technique, which is similar to an essence technique. However, he does a lot more attacks. He will do a flurry of more attacks than absorbing Lewis. But sometimes you'll see him. These are called Galas. <laughs> Not named after me. But <laughs> They're a fiend type enemy. They're like a red dragon dinosaur. I mean, I know they're not named after you because we're killing them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're gonna be using, yeah, Inferno and then attacks with the sword to get rid of them. Not bad. After that, Rachel says we didn't, we didn't do that bad. And then she gets almost eaten by... She gets eaten by this creature. <laughs> so we gotta help her out. This enemy is called Hydrocubus. And the way that you do damage to this... creature is you need to get rid of its tentacles first. It will regrow them. And then you can do damage to the main body. We're gonna use this move. This move where Ryu zips through the air and does a slice, that is called Flying Swallow. That's what that move is called. And that move is going to be very helpful for yeah, attacking enemies that are in the air. Stuff like that. Yeah. So we finished that. Next mission, we're going to be seeing a lot of fiendish enemies or monsters. We saw the the red uh, dinosaurs and Hydrocubus, the tentacle monster. But now, yeah, we're going to be seeing a lot more fish in this chapter. This chapter is quite lengthy. There's a lot of fights in this chapter. I'm going to be if collecting just, another elixir. Yeah, if you I could can take advantage yeah. of that. Chat, you're doing as amazing as Ryu is at completing missions because I asked for 70k and you gave it to me. We've hit 70,000! Now, 
your next mission, if you choose to accept it, is of course that $77,777.77. I will say it again, but <laughs> if we can get there, we are doing amazing, folks. Thank you all so much for your generous contributions. Cool. Okay, so there is a fight here. We can introduce to monks. They are the flying fiendish enemies. First thing I do is hit them to put them on the floor and we're gonna be using fire wheels because the tick damage with the fire wheels is really good at... Yeah, getting rid of them. Do counterattacks on the smallish fiends. Then we can progress on with... It shows us these displays in the back that are covered with glass. In one of them, there is incendiary shurikens, which are like shurikens, but they have an explosive property. And we need to use that to open the door. Just coming up over here. This cracked wall, I should say. We'll clip them and then we blow up this wall. We're also going to be using them for the next fight. One thing about the monk fiends is because they fly around, it can be quite hard to get a hold of them and do damage to them. They also have a move where they can teleport, which is not very nice if they do that. We're just going to try our best. The code for this is always the same, so I just have to remember the code from previous playthroughs and you can just do that. Once you get that book, a fight emerges. Yeah, see they can teleport right next to you and be annoying. It's not very nice. One thing with fighting in Ninja Gaiden Black and for the speedrun is I am keeping an account of underneath the health bar and the Nimpal orbs. There it says Karma Combo Kill and Time. It is really important in speedrunning to take note of that because it gives you a lot of information it tells you how many enemies have died and it also tells you it, how your fight is going with the in-game time. So often during fights I'm keeping an eye on that because um, the fights have a fixed number of enemies to kill so I can take note of how many there are left. We placed the book there and now we're going to be going underground. That corpse has more incendiary shurikens, we're gonna be wanting to use them, so we take them. Open that wall. And now, on landing jumps for this segment are really important, because one thing about on landing jumps is that you get some invincibility at the bottom of his jump. So we can actually go through these spikes without him taking damage, which is very useful. That's us not to have to run on the walls and we can just go fast through here. Try not to go on the walls. <laughs> Don't have to wall run on the walls. But yeah, we make use of that in the speed run to go through here. Yeah. There'll be some healing in this chest. Gonna make a save. anything can happen. That was a little bit scary. If you fall down the middle there, you get a game over. <laughs> Took that a bit risky right there. But anyway, I survived, so that's good. <laughs> We're gonna go down here. There are fiends that spawn in, but they are not a requirement to kill. Quite a few fights that aren't a requirement for progression, so we can just avoid them. There are bats. Those bats can eat away at your health, so you gotta be careful of them. Especially when going up ladders. So this elevator that I just activated is on a timer. There isn't really anything required for me to do here. Like, it's not a requirement for me to kill these enemies. But, essence is also the currency of the game. So it can be pretty good just to kill them and collect their essence for extra money. There is a shop that's coming up in the next chapter, so it's good to make sure that I have enough currency to buy 
what I would like to. This chest has a new weapon, the Vigorian Flail. And we're gonna be using that for this next fight. I equip Inferno, I'm gonna replenish my... Now we have these fiendish bugs that are buzzing in here. First thing I do is block, and I wait for them to come together, like this. I'm gonna throw some incendiary shurikens around. They often come in a cluster, and you can just, knowing their behavior like that, you can, yeah, give a of it. Oh, I went over here. This is not the way that I wanted to go, but it's okay. First thing I want to go for is the archer on this side of the room. I want to throw an incendiary shuriken at him and then take advantage of that. Now the ultimate technique with the Vigorian flail does a lot of multiple hits. I am in a bit of a cluster right here. And what I'm hoping to do is hit multiple enemies with that. Because he also moves while doing that. Be good to take advantage of. There will be more spawning in. One thing about this fight is where they are positioned is random, so I really need to keep an eye out on where they are. I'm going to use an Inferno here to blast some of them. I was hoping that would hit this guy too. Because you, yeah, you really want to hit multiple enemies in this fight. Yeah. I'm gonna be pulling the essence from that fight over here. I'm gonna be using. Also going to be using an, another Inferno. There is a that scene that comes up, or just like a scene. During that, if I use an Inferno, it happens during it, which can save a bit of time. Then we just have to hit the button again, because you can't hit the button again unless you kill those enemies. So yeah, to make sure that you do that. Pull up this ladder. The bats are probably gonna eat away a bit at Reed, but hopefully not too much. Yeah. Gotta be careful there because if you're like too slow, they will do a lot of damage. <laughs> they gotta be really careful. This platforming coming up is rather dangerous because there are archers. But for the run, we have something that we do. Because these archers notice when you use the block button, and the roll button is the same as the block button. If you do this rolling, you can actually manipulate them in such a way so that you can make it up there first. Yeah, a bit of manipulation of the AI. I'm gonna get rid of these bats. These bats also drop health, which is good. If you need health, you can kill the bats. Need to do some platforming up here. Gonna do this. Now we're getting to the final boss fight of this area. This is the Bone Dragon. I think that's what it's called. I actually don't really know what this... I think it's Bone Dragon. <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm good for a really big thing that you have to beat. <laughs> oh, Bone, bone Dinosaur. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's called Bone Dragon. Well, while you're defeating the Bone Dragon, I do have a couple of donations for you. Uh, yeah, Corrosive okay. Frost sends in $25 saying, I'm a simple man. I see Gal playing an action game for charity. I donate. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, Destroyer TZ sends in $25 saying, Ninja Gaiden kicked my butt so many years ago. Great to see this game get crushed in the speedrun and with excellent commentary. 
Thank you. Yeah, for this fight we use the flail. He is doing these tail swipes with his yeah tail, which is probably one of the worst moves that he can do. He did that a lot during this fight, so that was not very nice of him. <laughs> very slow. But we do the best with what we have. And that's the end of that chapter. Now the next chapter is the Hidden Underground. After we defeated the boss, he fell down all the way down here. And now we have access to another room, which is where we're going to be going. Picking up the Lives of the Thousand Gods. What Lives of the Thousand Gods does is when it's consumed, it slightly increases Ryu's health bar. We use that. It can help in a lot of sticky situations because especially the boss of this chapter, grab attacks in this game are extremely punishing and a lot of the enemies in this game do wild. They do, yeah, really amazing amounts of damage. <laughs> yeah. So, reason why I wanted to shock mainly was to upgrade the sword because now that I've upgraded the sword there is a certain move that we now have access to and that move I'm going to get to show off in just a minute it is called gleaming blade it allows Ryu to spin in like a circle like this and it does multiple hits to an enemy this room typically to get up there to those two arches you have to shoot an arrow to create platforms but using Ryu's jump off the wall and using a shuriken to lock onto the enemy, you can actually make it up here without having to do that. And that's a lot faster than doing some platforming across yeah, the platforms that the game gives you. Do we do that? Because <laughs> you'll notice there's these... Yeah, the the swinging at the top there. There's usually those platforms and then those try and hit you off. That was the blue room and now we have the red room. This room is a lot harder. I'm really hoping that these shurikens don't get blocked by them. Very good, okay. So we use the incendiary shurikens and on landing jumps and yeah, good movement through the center there so that we can make it. That room can be rather pesky, <laughs> but thankfully it went well. Because yeah, there is a way that you use your movement to go through there, the spikes and everything like that. After we did those two rooms and hit the buttons, we now have access to this room, which will have a mini boss. This is Hydrocubus again, we're seeing him again. But instead of what we used before, we're going to be using Gleaming Blade. You can also absorb essence into that, into the Gleaming Blade technique to do even more damage. Please flanks follow. I, I do want to say, chat was very excited for the number seven, uh, especially we've seen a <laughs> lot of your adorable emotes, Gala. Uh, in chat, can, if, if you've got Gala, Gala's emotes, can you please post more of them in chat? I love the hypes. I, I love the cats. Get them in chat, Aww. please. <laughs> um, but also, anytime you've got time for me to read donations, I've got them here for you. Oh, you can you can probably read a few now. Yeah. I'm All right. Just uh, a little bit. <laughs> well, speaking of the number seven, Frozen Flygon sends in seven dollars and seventy-seven cents, saying. I won't make Zoku read too many more sevens, but hopefully more of you in <laughs> chat will. All aboard the $7 train, all the way to the bonus game. C 
Kate Lipsy also sends in $7.77 saying, getting in on the $7.77 donation train. Let's meet that $77.77 goal. Uh, no, folks, they're, they're not trying to be outdone here, but Anonymous also joining in on that $7.77 train. No comment. And another Anonymous, wow, Anonymous, donating a hundred tickets to that train with seven hundred seventy-seven dollars. Thank you all so much. And you know what? Flygon doesn't want to make me read too many more sevens, but I I, I want to read sevens. I want to read sevens. Okay, there's just three three of these ninjas here that I had to defeat. That went pretty well, all things considered, because they are very agile. So we try and hopefully make <laughs> sure that they don't move too much. Now this boss coming up is rather a boss with a lot of reputation. This is Alma. We have a few things that we do for Alma. We're going to be using Inferno and we're going to try and loop her. Light attack, heavy attack, light attack, light attack, and then... Oh. I shouldn't try and explain it while I do it. <laughs> He's turning himself up. That's okay. Okay, that's okay. Gonna do a menu. Gonna replenish my Nympho. This. Try and knock her down. If she's in the air, we can use a slice. She has a grab attack, which you really don't want to get hit by. Knock me over, that's not very nice. That's okay. And then we do Inferno afterwards, after doing that combo. We do it again. Yeah, now we can defeat her. So that's a light attack, heavy attack, two light attacks, and then a heavy attack going downwards. And then you do Inferno. And you can get her into a loop of doing that. However, she can decide to dodge attacks, she can be a bit random, so that doesn't always happen, but we try our best to, yeah, trip her over and then, yeah, take advantage of that moment and continue the fight onwards. So, so the next two chapters are going to be kind of in a military setting. This chapter is called Tyrant Under Attack. We're going to be seeing some heavily armed soldiers lots of other things. Now this fight, there are three enemies that will come down from that corner. We use Inferno to blast them and then he was not in my range unfortunately, sometimes that happens. And then we use Gleaming Blade, the spinning with the sword to chop them all up. There's gonna be a bit of movement coming up so if you have any more donations to read this is a good point to we absolutely like do. Uh, Kiwi sends in $50 with no comment, but thank you so much for that. Um, and Wayward France sends in $19, but hopefully this makes it $70,777. Uh, we, we actually shot past that, but thank you so much for that donation, Wayward France. I, I get your feeling, and I understand you too want me to read more sevens. <laughs> Um, question marks. I, let, let me just do a quick count here to make sure it's not seven question marks. Uh, you know what? It is not seven question marks. I'm very sorry to disappoint you, Ward. It's ten question marks. But uh, question marks sends in $135.76 saying cheers and remember to have fun. Thank you so much. Gala, are you having fun? Because I'm, I'm yes. having fun. Yes. All right. It's good. <laughs> And chat, if you're having fun, make sure you get some more of those emotes in chat. I, I see Gala's tap and tap emotes and I love them. They're so cute. Oh, Yeah, my friends are awesome. I really appreciate them. Thank you, everyone. We're going to be using the bow here to shoot off these guys. And then after we do that, there's going to be a helicopter that's going to come in, which we're also going to shoot with arrows. Try and do our best with aiming. Almost got four. We hit the helicopter with four hours, and then it's like, oh, 
That's not good, so it goes away. <laughs> so, yeah, that happened. Now there is an enemy that spawns up here, and it's a requirement to get rid of them. They take a little while to spawn in, but they should be coming in soon, hopefully. They just take a little while. There they are. I just gotta hit them with a few arrows. And we hear them do their death sound, and then we go this way. The main reason why the game wanted you to defeat that enemy was to see that lovely looking bow in the window. So now we're going to go and collect that bow because that bow is a little bit better than the one that we currently have. That bow is called a strong bow. Go up here, and we're going to collect it. The next chapter, we're going to get our hands on some new arrow types. Which we're going to use with the strong bow. The strong bow allows you to shoot a lot. There. Now we can do this. And that's gonna be the end of the chapter where that statue is. Yeah. And we just make it to the chapter. If you have anything else you'd like to say, you're most welcome to you. Is that good? Well, right now, we're at a total of $70,951. Sorry, I keep throwing in the dollars at the wrong place. Uh, $70,951. I, I see, I'm seeing a lot of hype for seven <laughs> uh, in chat. I would like to see some more because, again, our milestone incentive is $77,777.77 to get Hollow Knight Path of... <laughs> Pantheon of Hallowness. Wow, I couldn't confuse that because there is also an incentive for Hollow Knight Path of Pain, $2,262 um, out of $6,000 right now. If you donate towards that incentive, all of your money goes towards also unlocking our milestone bonus game. So anything that you are able to give is greatly appreciated because again, it's all going to the great cause that is Malala Fund. Awesome. So we're going to this warehouse and we're going to be collecting this elixir here. And we're going to be performing a skip. So usually there you have to do some things and there are some drones that come out with lasers. But we don't have to deal with them because what we're going to do is we're going to do that movement through the air to make it on top of that platform. Now we can go to get the key card which we need to exit the warehouse. So that's a really good use of reuse movement to, yeah, make it through. Ninja skills. <laughs> oh. Sometimes when you try and interact with the door, it thinks you want to pick up the, the map, which is not what I wanted to do. Anyway, now we can put this keycard in and go through. I got hit by a laser, which is those drones. Usually they spawn in a lot earlier, but using that skip, you don't have to deal with them until after. Now, I had picked up some explosive arrows, and we're going to be using that for these soldiers that come here. Something funny about these soldiers is that if you just stand in one place, they will run to the wall. I wanted to just show that off because it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't really realize where you are because you're standing in one spot. And there's going to be oh, those are some 11 some major rooms going on. Yeah. <laughs> the, ar the arrows of the bow are very powerful, these ones. And now, for this part, we have a bit of a boss. And we're going to be versing a tank. And what we're going to use to defeat the tank, we're going to use the bow and arrow. <laughs> but this time we have some better arrows that we got from that box that we're going to be using. Now, this box is also really helpful because it can tank some damage for us. 
when the oh this is not good yeah that was not good he was coming towards me i saw that happening i was like this is not good oh no <laughs> i should have just kept shooting but it's hard to know okay now ryu is in a really bad spot but we're gonna put him in a good spot by putting him behind this box some of the shots that the tank will do hopefully will not collide with him however this the tank has a few different lines that it can take and today it's taking the worst line that it could take that was really scary that was really not nice <laughs> but wow <laughs> All right, so today I've learned you can defeat a lot of things with bow and arrows. I would like to see some donations telling me what's the most interesting fight you've had with a bow and arrow. Uh, if you could just share that with me, I, I want to learn because I didn't know you could defeat a tank with a bow and arrow. Yeah. Now before this, I'm actually just going to quickly make a save here. Because if you thought the tank fight was kind of <laughs> crazy, well, we're now going to verse a helicopter. The helicopter that we saw before is back. So we're going to be using the bow and arrow for that as well. <laughs> we'll just have to try and aim well. Okay, the helicopter didn't take its bad path. There is one path that it can take, which is really awful. And it didn't do that today. Thankfully, it wasn't on the same behavior as the tanks. Also, because I lost my talisman to the tanks, being rude, I have to take note of that also. So this is the rooftop. There is a communication tower here and we have to hit those uh, white circles on the tower. While we're doing this, there are some enemies to the side that are shooting at me. But just try and ignore them. They can throw grenades, which isn't very nice. But thankfully they didn't do that. That's the only thing that really makes him get out of that bow view. Gonna be some enemies in here. They're gonna want to, yep. <laughs> but we just go past them. It's always funny how calm he comes out of the doors after being shot at by all those rockets. He's just like, oh yeah, I'm leaving the room now. <laughs> they just let him pass. Now, it is a requirement, yeah, to come back like this because there is a door, but for some reason, in order to go through that door, you have to come back again to get that control key from the enemies. The first time you go through, they don't have that key, the key code, but the sec when you go back, they do. So it's a bit of a weird back and forth. So, I just have to do that. And now we can make it through the door that's down. interact with this and that's the end of the chapter. There's a cutscene that you do, that I'm going to be skipping here, but Ryu rides on top of a train. <laughs> that's what happens. And then we go to the next area. So for this next part, it is it needs to load for the enemies to come in. 
So this is about 40 seconds of just me waiting. So if you have anything you'd like to say about donations or anything, you're most welcome. Sure thing. Actually, just in time for us to completely miss Ryu catching a ride on a train. <laughs> Axe Jack sent in $25 saying, This donation goes out to Ryu. How is he not tired? <laughs> uh, he, he's done a lot of fighting and jumping around here. I, I, I kind of agree, but you know what? It's all because of that missed cutscene where he was riding on a train, apparently. He got in some good rest there. Uh, I would also just like to remind us all that, again, the Yeti uh, is donating $5 per Frost Fatale shirt sold to Malala Fun. Um, we, are t- we have two amazing shirts this event, so please go to theyeti.com and check them out. Awesome. So this is the aqueduct. This is a rather large chapter as well. I'm going to be seeing a lot of different enemies, and there's quite a few puzzles in this area. Or it's a requirement to collect one item and put it in another area, which unlocks more aspects of the yeah the area of the mission. But yeah, the music in this area is pretty good. I like the music in this area. We have to go up here. There is a chest with a key, which I have to collect. You can that rat there or mouse, the rat that's there. In the game, those rats are an indicator of where you can grab the grab the the side wall. They they're like little helpers in the game to let you know where you can do certain things. <laughs> There's a rat like that earlier in the game as well. So with that key that I got, we can go in here and now we're versing this. This is a, a worm. Electric worm. We're going to be using Gleaming Blade. We jump over the worm when it does that move playing with its body to the side. We do a slice through and then we can do Gleaming Blade afterwards for lots of damage because Gleaming Blade does multiple hits. So yeah, that's really helpful. And the slash going through has invincibility frames. So Ryu doesn't get damaged by the attack, he will just go through it and come out of it safe. This chest has some essence, so we're collecting that for money because we want to do a shop later and we collect this red tablet. We need this to open up another area. So we're gonna go do that. To open it up we have to go this way. We go up here, and I have to place the tablet down here. And by doing so, that lowers the water in another area. So we're going to make it over there. But before I do, we're going to be collecting another Spirit of the Devils to increase how much Nympho Ri you can use. So we're going to the area where the water had lowered. Before you couldn't access that area, you couldn't even go in the door or anything because it said that the water rushed in on the other side. And in that area we collect a statue which unlocks another area. <laughs> so we're going to be travelling. place the statue next to that one. I can hear there's some bats, but they're okay. Now we're in a cave. Now we're having a fight. We have a fight here with two electric worms. The double trouble. <laughs> We're gonna using the slash and gleaming blade. Because there are multiple enemies, I have to make sure I keep an eye on exactly everything that's happening. Especially if they do grab attacks. I don't like it when they spit. That's not very nice. I can also use my explosive arrows during this fight. Yeah, there's a 
there's a block border there, so I can hit him like that. Good. Cool. Oh, we defeat them both. Cool, cool, cool. I'm gonna be collecting that yellow essence for money. I keep my currency good for the rest. Grab healing. I'm already full on healing, that's good. Good to know that. There is a limit of how much healing you can carry. So whenever you try and pick up more, it will tell you that you can. This chest though, there will be a large devil elixir, so I picked it up. Go in here. Spooky looking cave. Eerie cave. What of eerie sounds. There are some bugs here, buzzing away. We don't need to deal with them though, we just have to collect the blue tablet. And we need that to unlock another area. So we're gonna be traveling back. If you have a donation or two, you're most welcome to read. Sure thing. Uh, Bookworm at 42 actually says, I heard there was an all sevens donation train. They donated $7.77 and yes, that train is still going. Please send in your all sevens donations because again, our milestone that we want to hit is, <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this again. Of course I can believe I'm saying this again. $77,777.77. And, and folks, folks, you're doing amazing because we've hit $71,000. We're getting there. We are getting there. And just remember your donations, any of them will go to this milestone. So you can put your donations to say the save or kill Nailsmith incentive we have for Hollow Knight, which is coming up right after this run. Or you could put it towards Path of Pain. Also for Hollow Knight, uh, we're at $2,470 on that one out of 6,000. But if you do that, if we unlock that, then Emre will be pay playing um, <laughs> a different, a more difficult version of White Palace. And again, Gal has been doing a wonderful job of fighting and platforming and, and definitely a lot of fighting with arrows here <laughs> in Ninja Gaiden <laughs> Black. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not as familiar with Hollow Knight as I ought to be. I probably won't be as many arrows, but you know what? You want to educate me? You want to get that in, um, incentive in, so go ahead and get those donations in. That's again, Those donations, we can make it easy for you, all sevens. We love that here. Awesome. I just hit that button so we can unlock that door. And we're going to be coming up to the final boss of this mission. Which is going to be in this area. The underground sanctuary. We need a sword to put into that, into the floor there. We have to go up and get it. Have to hit that button. Hitting that button lowers this piece down, which we can use to wall run off of. We go here, we go on the branch, and we go across. We collect the the, the blade. Now before I go down though, there is a menu that I want to do to prepare for the fight. We're going to be equipping incendiary shurikens. We're going to be equipping the Luna. We're going to be equipping fire wheels. Using a heal. Using another Spirit of the Devils to increase an info slot. And that's the menu that we do. And we also use an upgrade on Inazuma, which was a Nimpo that I collected, which is a Nimpo we use for late game, so I'll explain it then. So this is Pazu. Objective of Pazu's fight is to do enough hits on him at first so that he will lower his head like this. And I'm gonna be using the incendiary shurikens. His head is the part of his body that will take the most damage. So we really wanna aim these incendiary shurikens at his head. Try our best to. <laughs> Oh, 
He does laser moves. He has a quite quite a few different moves that he can do. I'm not in a very good spot. I'm gonna try and hit his head if I can. The camera in this game is not always my friend, unfortunately. We take him out. Yes, yeah, mainly his head and his wings. They, yeah, take more damage. So, with throwing the shurikens, you really want to try and make sure that they stick to his face, so that when the explosion goes off, it does quite a bit of damage. You can do that fight really fast. Unfortunately, sometimes he wants to run around. <laughs> Not very nice, but what can you do? You just do your best. <laughs> I collect a gold medallion from that chest. It's a key item, so it's very important that I pick that up. It's for a puzzle that's coming up a bit later. This chapter is pretty relaxed as there is a lot of swimming. Let me check here. Yeah, I can pick up another here. Okay. Yeah, this is also a pretty good donation reading chapter since we're just going to be doing a lot of swimming. Yeah, looking through the area. So. Do you have any donations? Or if anyone wants their donation to be read live on stream, get your donations in. This is a good opportunity. <laughs> you heard the runner, folks. And uh, starting with Kenneth, actually, sends in $150. Ah, Ninja Gaiden. The game that asks if you are a bad enough dudette to take down a tank with a bow and arrow. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Gala, Gala is such a bad enough dudette that she can do that and send the call out for donations at the same time. Folks, I don't know how she does it. Uh, Anonymous, going on that $7.77 donation train, by the way. Thank you so much for joining that train. No comment, but we really appreciate each and every one of you sending in your donations here. I also have another $5 from Anonymous here. You know what? We'll take it. $5 for the donation train is <laughs> just as great as $7. Here, actually, Gala, can I ask, do you happen to have a preference between save and kill Nailsmith? Because that, that is an ongoing incentive bid war that we have. Do, are you a kill kind of girl or are you a save kind of person? I'm a kill kind of person. Oh, <laughs> I play oh, a lot oh. of I play a lot of bloody action games and <laughs> like yeah, a lot of combat games, so if there's save or kill, I'm usually kill. <laughs> Alright, well, Gala's just said that she's in for killing Nailsmith. <laughs> We've got that live on stream, folks. That save or kill Nailsmith bid war, save is at $100.27, but kills at $47.77. By the way, get more and more of those sevens in. <laughs> so, Gala wants kill. Uh, I, I mean, you gotta do it for her, right? <laughs> Brad Lowen, uh, I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> uh, Brad Lowen uh, sends in $25. Very simple, but very, very astute. Get it. Well, Brad, you got it. <laughs> you know what we are trying to get here? Sorry. Uh... Oh, I was just going to say, um, so on the run, for this mission, uh, we don't pick up the air tank. There is an item you can pick up which allows Ryu to breathe underwater. But because we don't collect that item, because that item costs about a minute or so to collect, we use Ryu's healing items for when he starts taking damage from losing his breath. So that's how that we're. Go that's how we are going to make sure that he doesn't die under the water. So it's a bit risky because you just see Ryu's health bar coming down, but it's worth it to save time. So that's what we're going to be doing. Yeah, well, we, what did you want to say? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, a denim glasses sent in $17.70. I see what you did there. <laughs> Saying, keep up the excellent run gala and make sure to stay in bounds while swimming. Is, is that a thing that can happen? 
Yeah, on one of my runs where I was on a PB pace, I actually went out of bounds, not in the good way, in the bad way, <laughs> and I got myself stuck. So, yeah, I'm going to make sure that doesn't happen in this swimming area. That happens sometimes if you swim too close to one of the walls here. So, I was trying to cut a corner really fast, trying to go fast. <laughs> I end up going out of bounds. So, oh, no. yeah. I'll make sure I don't do that again. All right, well, we're staying in bounds, but but I want to see that donation number go out of bounds. And you know what that boundary is, folks. All sevens. That's seven sevens in a row. $77,777.77. Please make me say that again. <laughs> Get those donations in. We want to shoot way past that. We're going out of bounds on that one. <laughs> On the left side of the screen, the the bar that is yeah vertical, that's reused breath, and that's gonna hit zero very soon, and we're gonna start seeing Ryu take health damage. Yeah, so if you can see how his health bar starts to eat away, and when it gets low enough, I'm gonna be using a heal like this, and then it replenishes his health. For some reason, you can do that. But it's good for us runners that we can do that, even though it can be a bit nerve-wracking. But it's very good. So that's what we're going to be doing. The thing is, though, if you let him drown, yeah, he'll get a game over, and that's definitely not what we want. <laughs> so we're just going to have Ryu drink underwater, drink the potions underwater. We'll also use that as like a friendly reminder to stay hydrated, chat. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not the final boss. <laughs> yeah. Final boss can be a bit mean, so we're going to be doing a save. Now, this is Doku. Doku was the one who uh, terrorized Ryu's village at the start of the game. So Ryu is really angry at Doku and has a lot of revenge for him. And Doku's boss theme is probably one of the best. He has a really good drum theme. I like it a lot. Gonna be using fire wheels for the iframes and also to do tick damage on him. That was very scary that he grabbed me like that. He has quite a few moves. He can block, which is not very nice. But we're gonna be using the Luna to do this vertical attack, which also goes over him. So we jump over him. He is so close to death. Good. Okay. Yeah, he has quite a few different moves, so you have to look out for them and just try and do that attack, jumping over him and also doing damage to him with the Luna. Yeah. That strategy was found by Digital T, so shout outs to Digital T. <laughs> Not the Ninja Guide in Black Luna. We're going to be equipping the sword and the shuriken. So usually here you do a puzzle platforming. However, Ryu is a ninja. He doesn't need to do that. So we do that instead. You can actually use the wall instead of moving those pyramid platforms around to get to here. You can actually just go on the side walls and make it up like that. So that's what we do on the run. Yeah, clever use of Ryu's platforming movement. We used a lot of heals going through the water, but it's totally okay that we did that because there are heals in these chests coming up. There's quite a few chests with heals in them, so we can replenish our stock. Having good stock of heals during the run is really important because you would hate to be in a situation where you're low health or in danger and you can't heal. Yeah, so we're going to be doing, making sure that we have good heals. Equipping the Luna just to break that wall and then re-equipping the sword again. This next segment, even though it's rather pretty, it's probably one of the hardest for movement for the Ninja Gun Black speedrun because the walls are not just straight walls. They often have indentations on them. 
have lumps and stuff like that, which can make it a bit hard for moving around. So we're going to try and do the best that we can. First section of this area is all ice, an ice cavern. Break open that wall. Just going to do some movement on this wall to make it up on top of here. Go down here. Go to the side. Collect this key item, which we need the shield of vigor to go down. To go into a, a door. Go back up. We go around. Try not to hug the walls too much. Go back up. We go here. I'm gonna actually make a save here. Because this next segment is not full of ice, it is going to be full of lava. And lava is very da <laughs> damaging, so it's a good thing I did it. Did a... yeah, it's very easy to get stuck in the lava too. There are enemies in the lava and you got a platform around. Yeah, got to keep an eye on that. I'm also collecting these iron ores because there is an item that we need to form. E item. Usually there you grab the side wall to make it across while those uh, beams of steam are coming out. But you can actually use reuse aerial movement to make it across without having to do that. Actually gonna do a heal, I think. Oh actually we'll try and do this. Nice. Awesome, we got that, cool. So that platforming Save a little bit of time. Usually you go onto this kind of seesaw and have to go around, but you can actually run across the wall and make it up there to the, the basin without having to do that. Then we can make it back as well. Okay, now I'm definitely gonna have to heal for this part. Because there's a skip in the lava that I want to do. Oh, if I can do it, that would be good. Good, nice, awesome. <laughs> so you can platform on the walls there without having to go around. There's quite a few movement tricks like that throughout the run that you can do to, yeah, make it through fast. The lava that one can be a little a bit daunting because you're sitting. <laughs> that one can be a little bit daunting because you sit in the lava and you just see your health going down. But yeah, you just need a little bit of confidence and you can do it. We go up here, the cog that formed we pick up and now we have to go down here. And we're going to be versing a big enemy whose name is Jotunfrau, which I'm pretty sure when translated means snow princess or snow lady, something like that. Isn't she beautiful? <laughs> anyway, for her fight, for her fight, we're going to be using the the Luna, the upwards move with the Luna. Jotunfrau gave us really good moves. She has a move where uh, she cannot be damaged at all. So we really don't like that on the run because we want to be killing enemies as fast as possible. And not being able to even hurt them is really not good because you just have to wait. So thankfully she didn't do that move. It's like an ice slam move. Yeah, so thankfully she didn't do that. So that was very good. Now we're going to be going back because there is a place where we want to put the cog of Vigor. And we're also going to have to change my Luna back to the sword. Don't do that real quick. Do that. There is a lot of appreciation for you defying physics entirely in chat. I, j I just need to let you know this, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So we put it in there, we go in, in this chest there's a heal, very good to keep up on that. I actually use one for the next fight coming up. I also might do a heal, uh, do a save. Oh, that's okay, I almost killed myself from there. <laughs> Whew. Okay. Another chest. 
Well, I since you almost killed yourself, I do have a $77.70 donation. Wow. From Anonymous saying, Gala has spoken. Violence it is. Once again, Gala's <laughs> incentive is to kill Nailsmith in Hollow Knight. It's not for you to be killed. Let's be clear on that. Uh, if you've got time for another one, I've got another one. I just gotta fight this enemy right now. Sure thing. He has this move where he can shoot these fire rings. That's the most awful move that he has. So they can also do a lot of damage, so you gotta look out for that. We pick up the Eye of Flame. We now have the Eye of Ice and Flame. So we can, yeah, make it to the very last part of the, this mission now. Bit of platforming here that's on a timer because the flame will come back after a certain amount of time. Yes, yeah, so you have to make sure that you platform that first. Gonna stock up on some healing. We press this button and now we can make it to the final boss. I'm gonna put the Eye of Flame and also the Eye of Ice that we got from Yotun. And for this fight that's going to be coming up, we're going to be using the Lunar again. We collect this statue. The deity. Now this is Smuljin. Smuljin's fight, the first thing he does is lowers his head. Going to be using the Lunar. Now we're going to try and stay in the lava with him. He has a few moves which are not very nice. We're hoping that he will lower his body, but it doesn't look like he wants to do that. So that's not very nice of him. This is really bad. He's not giving me good moves. This is really bad. <laughs> Please don't do that. <laughs> Gosh. Now this is really bad because I don't have healing for the next chapter, so... Uh, we'll try and make do. Hopefully the next boss fight will be okay, even though she has a very big reputation for not being okay. But that's... Yeah, you just gotta keep going. So that's what we're gonna do. So that was Smoljin. He has some attack moves that he does where his body will lower in the fire and that way you can easily get attacks onto him but for that fight he was misbehaving and was standing up and doing a lot of moves that were not good so i had no choice but to use a lot of my heals very unfortunate now this Chapter, there's going to be a lot of movement before we reach the boss fight, so you're most welcome to read a lot of donations. Absolutely, just cut in whenever you need me to stop. Uh, we're going to start with Barashiel, uh, donating $7.70. Love to see those sevens, by the way. I'm a simple gal. I hear a runner say to donate, I donate. Uh, can we get that from you one more time, by the way, Gala? Donate to kill. <laughs> <laughs> Good enough for that me. Almost sounded like, that almost sounded like a robot. Donate to kill. Donate to kill. Donate to kill. <laughs> <laughs> so you heard it from Gala. Donate. Uh, her choice of incentive is kill the nailsmith uh, for Hollow Knight coming up next. Uh, but that's not <laughs> the only incentive we have. Uh, as Scaredy Matt points out, with $25, hey, y'all. Watching Gala speedrun this game is both awesome and harrowing, as I still have PTSD from the time my friend asked for my help to finish it. The Twin Worms fight was my original Dark Souls experience. To reflect this very personal path of pain of mine, I'm donating towards the same incentive, because sharing is caring. <laughs> 
keep it up, Gala. <laughs> Thank you so much, Scary Matt. Uh, yes, that is our other incentive for Hollow Knight, the path of pain. Gala likes violence, so you know what? You can't go wrong if you donate to Kill Nailsmith versus Saving. By the way, those donations for Kill Nailsmith have really come in since you've said that. Kill is now at $203.31 <laughs> compared wow. to Say's $107.97. It shot way up there. That's how much a difference your <laughs> donations made, folks. <laughs> and Path of Pain is at $2,585 out of $6,000. Again, uh, that incentive, uh, we need to beat that by about like three quarters of the way through the run. Um, but all of your donations, whatever, no matter which incentive you choose, all of that go goes towards our milestone, our bonus game. That's Pantheon of Hallow, uh, you know what, let me show you that right. Pantheon of Hallow Nest. Um, if we hit, again, $77,777.77. That's all seven, you know what to do. Awesome. Yeah, keep going, keep going. If you have any more to read. <laughs> all right, uh, Aeon Frodo sent in $15 saying, go Gala, go. Oh, thanks to you. <laughs> and Anonymous you. sends in five dollars saying, Great to see Ninja Gaiden in black and to see it run by a talented runner. Good luck to all the runners. Thank you. So just there I used the Inazuma Nimpo to uh, lightning strike the purple zombie enemies there because when you kill them, they will give you a talisman. And because I lost mine, collecting that one is a very good resource to use for the run. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah, if you have any more donations to read, feel free to okay. keep Okay, uh, Insane Insomniac. <laughs> uh, wow, sends in $77.77. Same back with another. Looking forward to Hollow Knight. Kill the Nailsmith. <laughs> Today at Frost Fatals 2022, we are all in for violence. But you know what? <laughs> that violence can only be determined by your donations. <laughs> like like that one. Kill the nailsmith. <laughs> or 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 even better, kill the nailsmith. <laughs> of course that means if you want to save the nailsmith, folks, if you want to save the nailsmith, you better get your donations in. <laughs> Because once again, mm. that incentive is at uh, two to one kill t versus safe. And back to you, Gallus. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So here, Rio is back in the Hayabusa village. He's at the graveyard, very sad of the people that died. One of them in particular had a necklace on the gravestone with a stone that Rio puts on the hilt of his blade, and now he has a very powerful sword. He's he has the true dragon sword, which is now very powerful to use for the run. Now the next boss fight is also a boss with a very big reputation for being very cruel. So make sure to save before her fight. So this is Alma, however this is Awakened Alma. She's now in a different form. And what we're gonna be doing for her fight is we try and knock her over and then use Gleaming Blade. We we'll try and use Flying Swallow. She is another type of enemy that can decide if she wants to take damage or not. It's very cruel of her. Hopefully she took damage there. We try and use this move, which has a knockback property, which stuns her a little bit if she decides to take damage from it. You can throw pillars. She also has a grab attack move, which I hope we don't see! <laughs> oh no! You can see how much damage she does from that. I don't have any healing, so I really hope that... Yeah, okay. Well, it's a good thing I got that talisman because I needed it. Okay, anyway, yeah. She does a lot of damage. 
Okay, we just keep on going onward. We finish our fight. Now going in here... There are a few rooms of enemies that we need to defeat. We'll be collecting this. We put the water tablet in the correct spot. So for this, these rooms, we want to put the tablets in the correct spots. And each time that we do, there's going to be these bugs that come out. The Inazuma Nempo Sorcery. It allows Ryu to hit multiple enemies with these lightning strikes. Like that. You can also use the essence that comes from the enemies to do an ultimate technique like that with the Luna. Because the Luna has a really good range, it can hit multiple enemies. Gonna use one of these. And there are going to be, yeah, 30 bugs in this room and also in the next fight as well. I'm just going to be using the lightning strength. We'll remove the, the one of flame, the flame tablet, and we put it in the correct spot. And there'll be more enemies there. Oh. There are five enemies that spawn each time. I have a possibility of dropping red essence. Red essence, when collected, replenishes the impulse slot. Kind of hoping that we do get an opportunity to use it. Let me just do this real quick. Sometimes I can be a little bit. Long. Can do that. Also, very good thing about using that move is that ultimate techniques when the enemy dies will give you more currency. And there's a shot that I'm going to be doing in the next chapter. Also good for you, purchasing heels and things like that. That's the end of that chapter. This is a vengeful spirit. Out of this chapter, we're going to be collecting this statue. These statues that I've been collecting throughout the game are key items for the second last chapter of the game. And if you forget to collect them, you can get yourself in a lot of trouble. So it's very important to make sure that you collect them. Now we see that spirit there, that's Doku. So we defeated Doku in that fight where he was alive and now we have to defeat his spirit. <laughs> so we have to really make sure that he is dead dead. So Ryu has a lot of revenge for Doku so he really wants to just get rid of him. That's what we're gonna do in this chapter. But before we get to him, we have a few things that we need to do. We're sent back what was sent into this portal, which is a fiendish realm. Oh, we have to defeat some fiends. Just have to defeat them and then we get a key. Which we use. A door coming up. The statue of Muramasa, we're going to purchase some 
I can purchase a talisman, so I'm actually going to do that. And I'm going to purchase one of them and two of them. Cool. Awesome. That was really good. Talismans are really expensive, so if you have enough money for it, it's pretty good. Nah. This chapter has probably one of the most notorious... Um, enemies. They are called ghost fishes and initially these fishes weren't really meant to be an enemy or do anything. They were just meant to be, you know, some cute fishes flying around in the area. But they said, this is an action game. We can't have these just fishes doing nothing, you know. There's so much area here with no action happening. So they made them do something <laughs> very evil. What they oh, no. can do to Ryu when they buy him or grab him is they can disable him for a little while. So you really don't want them grabbing him. So we're going to try our best not to have that happen, though it might happen. Because they're very, very fast and agile as well. And they hone, home in on you. There's also a crab enemy there, hopefully to avoid him. So I'm going to be using on landing jumps because on landing jumps give Ryu a bit of invincibility at the bottom of his jump. So hopefully they don't get an opportunity to grab. <laughs> hopefully. We get to see Doku again. He's just scrolling along. He's going in that door with lion faces on it. So we have to get a key for, for that door. There are more fishes here. Going through this area casually is an incredible pain if you don't know about on landing jumps because, yeah, <laughs> they're very evil fishes. I'm beginning to understand some of these donation comments. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you got some donations, you're welcome to read a few. Yeah, the, the one I'm referencing here is saying ba is Barashiel. Uh, they're back with $7.70 again. <laughs> Thank you so much for the sevens. Saying, yeah, fair enough, but I'm donating to save since Gala clearly likes hard modes. <laughs> I, I, I see what you mean here. Wow. <laughs> um, Anonymous donates $77. Um, I, 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 I get what you're going for here, so let me make sure I have this right for you. Donate to cow. It's <laughs> very cute. <laughs> and OTP also, sorry, OTP uh, also uh, with a similar donation, seventy dollars and seventy-seven cents. Go, gala, go, go. Donate <laughs> to cow. Violence the announcement. <laughs> Thank you. So this is Rudoku's fight. Gonna be using Gleaming Blade, as you can see, the multiple hits is really good on him. When you're at a distance with him, he can do this one thing where he lowers his arms like that and then will come towards you. You can take advantage of that by doing the Gleaming Blade at the end. He can also try and grab you and do things like that, but you just wait for that. And then you can, yeah, do a lot of damage on him. Then he spins around like he was just put in a washing machine and he dies. But on his death, he cursed Ryu. So Ryu now is going to look a little bit different for the next chapter. So we're going to see that. This is chapter 15, the core. As you can see, he now has a little bit of a different, different tinting. And he has lightning, what looks like lightning up his arms. He is cursed. There is a key item I need to collect for this chest, which I'm going to be retrieving. But first, I'm going to go to these chests to get some. Yeah. Oh, oh, these enemies are not playing very nice. <laughs> Whew. They are. More ghost fishes here, so be a bit careful around them. It's also really dangerous with the fish when they, not when they all come at once, but when they come one after each other, that's when the, the pain really sets in. So, because yeah, it's really hard to 
get out of there, hold. Because what you do is you spin the joystick and mash all the buttons on the, the face buttons to try and get out. And if they're one coming one after the other, it's very hard to, very hard to do that. So this is the, the core of the Imperial Palace here. It's all these skulls, it's very ghastly looking. And there's gonna be several layers to this tower filled with enemies. So we're gonna do our best. This first level are the, the dragons. Okay. There's five. I'm looking at my kill counter to see how many I need to get rid of. That's seven. There's eight that I need to kill. Also because Ryu now has this sword, he has access to a few different moves. So we're gonna be using them where we can. Put in the statue and then we can go through this door to access the second level. Now it's not just a joyous trip up to the levels, there are ghost fishes. So you gotta be really careful going up. not get caught by them and killed by them, especially now that I don't have my other talisman. We keep using the Inazuma. I had upgraded it to three so that now we can one-shot the, the dragon things, the dinosaur things. Also, if I see an essence that's red, I really want to pick that up because it's a really good resource for this chapter to use the Nympha because we're going to be using that a lot. So there's 22 enemies in this segment. Yeah, now it says kill 22 and I know that I've killed all the enemies on that layer. Put the wolf deity in that one. We can now go to the next, next, next story of the two. On landing jumps, make sure these fish don't bite me. The hardest part for me is getting into the door. <laughs> now this is the third floor. I'm gonna go back. He's in a zoom in. Let's see it hit that many. There's a crab. Thing about in a zoom with the enemies is the enemies often take a really passive approach to you. If they see you summoning a lightning, you'll notice that they kind of look at you and they're kind of moving around. And sometimes they hide behind the pillars and they don't get struck by the lightning strike. So I gotta look out for that because it means I gotta look out uh, yeah, to using more resources. Thankfully on each layer too, yeah, there's a red there. I wanna make sure that I pick that up. Now this, this layer is the most cheekiest I would say because these crabs they have one particular move they can do where they can grab you and pull you to the lower floor. And that's really not good for our speed run. <laughs> so I gotta really look out for that. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh. oh. Very good. Put that statue in. Okay. Sure I'm going the right way. Now we're at the gates of hell part. I'm gonna be collecting these chests. Like that one. Gonna be doing a save. Very important. Now we're in, yeah, fiendish realm. Up there sitting up on a chair, that's Marpus. He is testing our strength, so to say. <laughs> He's summoning all these enemies and making us fight these fiends. He 
kills us a puny insect. And we have to verse. Hydrocubus again. This Hydrocubus has a lot more health. We have to look out for that. For the tentacles that spawn, I do flying swallow, shuriken, and then an attack downwards. Hopefully, it hits. Then we're going to be using this since the ultimate technique with the blade. And you can actually two cycle the Hydrocubus that way. Yes, that's very good. And we go back. And he's like, oh, you're not as weak as I thought. Oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Thanks, my list. I'm glad that I am impressing you. He also, for this part, he throws fireballs. Not very nice. And also, he laughs at us too. Not very nice. Bit of a bully. Oh. Oh. Then we have our seventh enemy to kill. And he, he keeps throwing fireballs and he's just laughing the whole time. <laughs> Now we have Jotunfrau again. Says, how do you like this? So, hope you like... <laughs> hope you're liking this. We put on the Luna. We're going to do this similar strategy that we did for the other Jotunfrau fight. However, this Jotunfrau, extremely dangerous, can do a heap of damage. That's the move that we don't like, this move right here, because during the Ice Slams, Jotunfrau cannot be damaged. The grab attack is very dangerous, gotta look out for that. These ice slams are really unfortunate. <laughs> Just gotta keep trying to do the best we can with this. Thankfully through the grab you can still do damage to her. Yeah. And when she does ice, ice spikes or ice slams, I don't like <laughs> Then we use an item, we're going to be using an elixir. We're going to be going through. Okay. That's it. That's it. Now he's going to verse us. So for Marbus's fight... We have a loop for him. With three light attacks and a heavy attack. After doing Inazuma... You can get him stuck. rather funny he's like that's it and then he just he just dies <laughs> he's he doesn't really get an opportunity to do anything it doesn't always play out like that that was the best that he could give me because sometimes he will summon enemies or he will just fly around but thankfully he did the move which is like this dive down to the ground and then if you use inazuma the lightning strike during that he kind of gets frozen and doesn't know what to do when you do that combo to him. And yeah, you can take him out really fast. So. <laughs> yeah, that was good. We do like it when people go fast around here. <laughs> okay, I have to do a menu before this part. Gonna be equipping fire wheels. Gonna be equipping these arrows. I'm gonna be doing a save. Now this is the part that I'm probably the most nervous about. If I can get up. Because there's one special thing in particular that we do to this next fight that I'll get to show off, which can be a little bit nerve wracking, but we will do our best. We go up here. And now the first part of this fight will begin so this is the Emperor. For the first part of the fight, we are on this platform. The Emperor can... summon the, yeah, the lasers. And we're going to be using Gleaming Blade on the platform to try and do damage to the body parts. 
So we do damage to the chest and the shoulders where those blue orbs are. We're gonna go on this side. You can actually move during that. That same part. Sometimes it can be a bit hard to actually make a connection. Okay. Now I'm gonna have to focus here. I didn't get it that time because I was a bit further away, so we're gonna try that again. Yeah, I thought I was a bit too further away. There is a quick kill that you can perform there where you can one-shot the second phase, and it's really good to get to show off, so I'm gonna try and show it off. We're just gonna have to do that uh, first part of the fight again, but that's okay. Well, can I get some hype in chat for Gala while that happens? <laughs> Thank you. I, I've been seeing a lot of adorable emotes from your channel. I also want to see all the adorable hype emotes that you've got. So bring it, to, give it to me, chat. Send them in. And while you do do that fight, I just want to do a quick reminder. Um, Hollow Knight, save or kill Nail Smith incentive. That <laughs> Gala endorses violence here. <laughs> so <laughs> Kill is still in the lead at two hundred eleven dollars and eight cents compared to Say's. $165.67. If you are a pacifist, if you are here not for violence, I'm not sure why, but if you're here not for violence, you want to get those donations in to save. Uh, but but if you are on Team Gala, and I, come on, why wouldn't you be on Team Gala here? If you are on Team Gala, you want those donations to go to kill. Um, or maybe you just you just want pain in general. So there's Path the Pain. Path the Pain is also available. It's an incentive that makes uh, one particular level especially hard for our next runner, Emre. Um, I believe that next that level is going to be the White Palace. Uh, so if you want to make things harder, if you want to give Emre some violence, you know, get your donations in for that. And all of this, all of this contributes to our milestone, that bonus game, uh, Pantheon of Hallow Nest at. Again, the all seven number, the seven sevens number, $77,777.77. Uh, awesome. <laughs> yeah, I got that one shot kill for the second phase. So I'm really happy I got to show that off because that's something relatively new, I guess. And it's really awesome to get to show off. It saves a lot of time. But yeah, I'm glad I got to show that off. Essentially, what you do is you shoot an arrow upwards through the skulls and it thinks you're doing a lot more damage than, yeah, thought you should be, so it does a one-shot kill, which is really awesome. Now we're on the final chapter, we're coming up to the final boss, which is one of the most hardest bosses in the game. Yeah, very punishing, very cruel, very everything, <laughs> lots of damage. So we have to, I have to really look out for him on what he does. He can behave very weirdly. So, yeah, we're gonna do our best. There's Rachel. She comes to help Ryu get up to the surface. Well, we're gonna verse the final boss. This is Mirai. However, this is fiendish Mirai. He does a lot more damage. And I have to be really careful of him. Gotta be using fire wheels as a way to get iframes to get invincibility from him. And I was gonna be using Gleaming Blade to get lots of damage on him. Looking out for where he is. I have to keep an eye on him. He also has grab attacks. Those grab attacks are extremely punishing, so I have to try my best not to get hit by them. And that's time. Cool. <laughs> Gee, geez, cool. holy crap. That, that yeah, was he... intense. Yeah, he is very fast and yeah, he can be yeah, very punishing. So I'm glad that went as it did. That he could have been a lot worse. So yeah. For that fight we used the yeah, the sword and fire wheels and yeah, we defeat him. So yeah, that's the Ninja Guide and Black Normal speed run. So I hope you enjoyed that run. A lot goes on in that run and it's really exciting to get to run. So I hope you enjoyed it. In this cutscene is the finale where the Dark Dragon Blade gets 
broken up. The evil is the evil has been defeated. <laughs> yeah. The sunset is out. Well, we've finished the game. Yeah. Thank you everyone for watching. I want to give a shout out to the Ninja Gaiden Black community, the Ninja Gaiden community. They've all been really welcoming to me since I started learning this run and yeah. I appreciate you all very much that you're all kind. Thank you very much. Also, shout out to my friends from my stream. You're all very supportive when I've been running this and yeah, you lift my spirits, so thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. And thank you so much, Gala. Uh, if people want to find you, where can they go find you? Um, I stream on Twitch, Galastrini. That's my username on Twitch. On Twitter is the same and on YouTube is the same. So if you want to find me, that's my username. Yeah. <laughs> I speedrun <laughs> a lot of action games, a lot of combat. Yeah, combat games are my favorite, so. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Well, thank you so much, Gala. And folks, uh, if you absolutely love that run, and why wouldn't you? Go ahead, you know where to find Gala. Uh, <laughs> and you know where to find violence. You can find it at Gala's channel, or maybe, maybe, maybe you can find it here. You can find it here at twitch.tv slash games done quick, because coming up, we're not done yet, folks. We're not done. <laughs> We still have some amazing incentives open again uh, for our very next run, run by Emre, Hollow Knight. This is apparently going to be the first time 106% uh, true ending energy is shown in a marathon setting uh, it, or, or, or a JDQ setting. And Emre is excited to see uh, to show it off. I, I know you are all going to be so excited to see it, but you can certainly upgrade that run. Uh, first, there's the Path of Pain incentive. Again, we're at $2,812.85 out of $6,000. We're almost halfway there. And if you like violence, and of course you do, because you just saw that amazing run by Gala. Can I get some claps in chat for that again, please? One more time. Ninja Gaiden Black by Gala. Absolutely amazing. So much violence. <laughs> and also, speaking of violence, Path of Pain. We're almost halfway there. You can do it. That upgrades the White Palace. That's uh, about, that's like a, a level about three quarters away into the run. You want to see it. You want to make things difficult for Emre. I probably shouldn't be saying it like that. But you know what? We love a challenge around here at Frost Fatales 2022. Um, all of your donations, whether it's for Path of Paid, whether it's to save or kill Nailsmith. And again, uh, the bid war for that, uh, it was really tight at one point. Uh, now it's like kind of zoomed ahead. Uh, kill uh, is at $211 because you all like violence, but now's the chance for people who like things to be saved, like frames maybe, <laughs> to get your voices in here because save is at $165. That's like a, a little under $50 difference. Even one donation can turn the tide on that. And all of those donations, all of that contributes to our bonus incentive, our milestone incentive. We hit that $77,777.70 mark. We are going to get to see M. Ray run pantheon of hollow nest so get those donations and we're at 72k right now actually thank you all so much for getting us there we're so close it's it's all it's just like a little over five thousand dollars away you can do it i absolutely believe in you folks i i'm seeing some messages in chat saying nail smith is a good bug he needs saving too so you know And I do just want to remind you all uh, that, remember, the runners here, um, all of you, your donations, everyone here behind the scenes, we're all working hard uh, and, and, and we're all do doing this for a great cause. That great cause is Malala Fund. Uh, Malala Fund is working for a world where all girls can learn and lead. They advocate for resources and policy changes needed to give all girls a secondary education, invest in local education leaders, and amplifies the voices of girls fighting for change. You can learn more at malala.org, but every single bit you donate 
really, really helps us out here. Not bits, by the way. Bit, <laughs> you can you can help uh, you can help support Games Done Quick with your bits and subscriptions. Well, and you can also contribute to keeping awesome events like Frost Fatales going. But that's it for me tonight, chat. That's actually, that's it for me on the mic here at the marathon. It's been a blast hanging out with all of you. And I've been so lucky to get to see some of these runs up close. So lucky to get to see your excitement. And so lucky to be able to do this again for the great cause that is Malala Fund. I'm going to tell you right now, if you want to donate to my incentive for, for, for whatever reason, uh, to my choice of incentive, I mean, I, I kind of like to see save go up or maybe the path of pain. Uh, you know, I can't decide between violence or, or pacifist. So I'm asking chat here to make the decision for me. But once again, you've all been great. I will be handing off you all off to Spectralight with our final runs of the night again. Thank you all so much. It's been a pleasure. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome back. I'm Spectralite, and this is Frost Vitale's 2022 Benefiting Malala Fund. That was a fantastic Ninja Gaiden Black run by Gallus Rini. Can we get another round of applause for a run well done in the chat? Let's see those GDQ claps. I'll be your host for our upcoming Hollow Knight run tonight, showcased by Emray. But hey, if we reach our donation milestone of $77,777.77, whoo, I've been practicing that, we can see a bonus run from Emre, Pantheon of Hollow Nest. This is a boss rush of every boss in the game. Our milestone must be met by the conclusion of the Hollow Knight run, and I know you want to see more speedruns tonight. Let's extend the event and get those donations in from Malala Fund. You can donate through gamesonquick.com. And speaking of donations, we have a $50 donation from Alieth saying, I've been watching Emory practice this run the last couple of weeks, and I'm so excited to watch this run. As am 
I. Make sure you select your desired incentive in the drop down menu when you donate if you want to donate to an incentive, which you should, which includes the path of pain incentive. If unlocked, M Ray will complete a more difficult version of White Palace, which is a mix of platforming and combat challenge. And I'm just going to check in real quick that we are just a little bit over halfway to completing that incentive. We have to reach a total of $6,000 and we are at $3,412. I know we can do it, chat. Let's get those donations in to unlock that incentive. And we also have a bid war going on to either save or kill Nailsmith. I don't know who Nailsmith is. I don't know if he's a nice person or not or or what's going on, uh, but, you know, if you're feeling violent today or if you're feeling altruistic, you can bid to save or kill. And let me just check in what we're at right now. It's a very, very close tie. Uh, we, we have saving Nailsmith at $215 and killing Nailsmith at 211 It's very, very close. Make sure to cast your vote to whether to kill or save Nailsmith. I know Gala is more of a kill person, but you know, let's let's see. Let's see, chat. What do you think? Should he survive? I'm so, so excited to explore Hollowness in this speedy fashion. Are you, chat? I'm, I'm excited. This is my first time seeing a, a Hollow Knight run. Super, super excited. Let's get those donations in to see even more Hollow Knight. We have a $25 donation from Lapras Soul saying, the Hollow Knight community has been so important to me these past few months, and I'm delighted to see, to get to see these fabulous ladies on the big stage. Best of luck to Emray on the run, and best of luck to Colette with commentary. Kick Radiance's butt. Indeed. And we have another $25 donation saying, it's me again. Just got home from work. Seems like I made it right on time for Hollow Knight. Looking forward to this one. Good luck, Emray. And that is from Garnet. Thank you so much for your donation. All right, and I'm getting word that we are ready for Hollow Knight. Get ready, chat. Let's explore Hollow Nest in a speedy fashion. So let's hand it over to Emre to get right into the action. Take it away. <laughs> 